Now we're moving on to solving two-step equations. When it comes to two-step equations, there's a little bit of a tweak, but not much really changes. We will still use inverse operations to solve equations that contain more than one operation. One little trick, it will probably help you out a little bit. It may help to think about using the order of operations in reverse to solve these equations and allow me to walk you through one of these two-step equations. In this equation, I begin with 6n plus 4 equals 28. In the order of operations, addition and subtraction are our last step. Here, we are going to subtract 4 from both sides first, because in this operation, on the side with the variable, 6n is being multiplied by 6, and then 4 is being added to it. So that's going to be the first thing we take away. We're going in reverse. So I take away 4 from both sides first. Okay, Subtract 4 from both sides. And that leaves me with, because that equals 0, 6n equals 24. Okay, 28 minus 4 is 24. Now, I just have a one-step equation. This is 6 times n equals 24. Well, the opposite of multiplication is division. So I divide both sides by 6 leaving me with n equals 4, because 6 divided by 6 is 1, and 24 divided by 6 is 4. I divided by 6 on both sides, and I did, in fact, isolate the variable. Now, you can check in the exact same way. To check your solution, you substitute it back into the original equation and then evaluate. So here I have an equation, negative 3p minus 8 equals 19. I add 8 to both sides first negative 8 plus 8, that is 0. And then I'm left with negative 3p equals what 19 plus 8 is, which is 27. Now this is just a one-step equation. To solve for p, I divide by negative 3 on both sides to undo this multiplication. Negative 3p divided by negative 3, that's going to give me 1p. And 27 divided by negative 3 is going to give me negative 9. Because 1p is negative 9, I know that p is negative 9. If I wanted to check, I take my solution and I plug it right back up into the original. So I have negative 3 times negative 9 minus 8, and I want to know, does that equal 19? Well, because of my order of operations, now I follow my order of operations because I'm evaluating. Negative 3 times negative 9 is positive 27. Is 27 minus 8 19? Well, yes, it is. So that is a wonderful way to check your equations to see if you've solved it correctly. So we're going to solve a few together. This is 8 plus j divided by 4. Don't get confused thinking this is some odd-looking fraction. It's simply just division represented within this two-step equation, and you know how to handle that. 8 plus j divided by 4 equals 17. Well, I want to take away what's added or subtracted to this first, and that is 8. So I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. That gives me j divided by 4 equals 9. Now to undo division, I have to multiply on both sides by 4. That leaves me with j equals 36 from 9 times 4. Okay? So let's do this one together. I have u divided by 6 minus 12 equals 3. Well, I want to get rid of what's added or subtract to my variable first, and I know that it's minus 12. So the opposite of subtraction is addition. So I'll go ahead and add 12 to both sides first. I know that this equals 0. So on the left side, I'm left with u divided by 6. You can put plus 0, but you don't have to. It's implied at this point. Equals 15. Okay. The opposite of division is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 6. This is technically 6 over 1. This leaves me with u equals 15 times 6 is 90. Here are just a few examples that we're going to work through together. 3n plus 8 equals 29. First, I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. 3n now equals 21 because 29 minus 8 is 21. Uh, the opposite of multiplication is division, so I divide by 3 on both sides, and n equals 7. In example b, negative 4m minus 7 is 17. 
The opposite of subtraction is addition, so I will add 7 to both sides. This helps to isolate it on the left. Negative 7 plus 7 is 0. On the left, I'm left with negative 4m, and 17 plus 7 is 24. Negative 4 times m equals 24. The opposite of multiplication is division. So I will divide by negative 4 on both sides, leaving me with 1m equals, now the signs are different, so my answer is going to be negative. 24 divided by 4 is 6, so my answer is negative 6. Example C, negative 6x plus 4 equals 2. I want to get rid of what's easiest to get rid of first. And I like to say that addition and subtraction are the easiest. So if I subtract 4 from both sides first, this is, leaves me with 0. So that's negative 6x equals 2 minus 4. That's negative 2, isn't it? And then I can divide both sides by negative 6 because that's the opposite of multiplication. And negative divided by negative, that's positive 1. That's exactly what I want. I have x equals, now I have a negative divided by a negative. I wouldn't plug this right into a calculator because you're not going to get an exact answer. In fact, it will come out as 0 0.3333 3, 3, and then it'll just run off your calculator. What is that though? Well, negative 2 divided by negative 6, well we know that it ends up being positive, so I can rewrite that as 2 sixths. But 2 sixths is just the unsimplified version of what? 1 third. And one-third as a decimal is 0 0.3 repeating forever. So it makes perfect sense. It is okay when you divide. If you get part of a whole, just write it as a reduced fraction. It's perfect. Lastly, m divided by 10 plus 32 equals 24. So I'm going to subtract 32 from both sides first. Minus 32, minus 32. That leaves me with 0. I have m divided by 10 equals... Well, this is an interesting situation. 24 minus 32. 32 is larger, so technically if I wanted to, I could say plus a negative 32. Signs are different. Find the difference. 32 minus 24 is going to be 8. So this is going to be negative 8, isn't it? Yeah. So then, if I have m divided by 10 equals negative 8, what number divided by 10 would give me negative 8. Well, we can find that by multiplying by 10 on both sides. And when I multiply by 10, this leaves me with 1m equals negative 8 times 10, which is negative 80. Okay. So here's a bit of application where your two step equations are really going to start coming into play. A new one year membership at Workout Nation sounds really fancy cost $630. A registration fee of $150 is paid up front. How much do new members pay each month? Well, let's just think through it for a second. If it costs $630 for a whole year, and you have to pay a $150 registration fee, then that means without that registration fee, you pay, let's see, we'll just subtract it out. $480. Well then, it asks how much do you pay each month? Well, how many months are in a year? 12. So I can divide by 12, and that's going to come out to be 40, right? Yeah. 12 goes into 48 four times, and then that additional zero. So $40 a month. Well, that's great. And that's exactly how, if you were going to go buy this gym membership, it's exactly how you would think. You can also set this up in a two-step equation. You're going to be really surprised, I think, to see that the steps that you take to solve it are exactly the same as you do kind of mentally. If we set it up, we know that what we need to know is how much do new members pay each month. That's our unknown. So that's what we say is our variable. There are 12 months in a year. So that's going to be multiplied by how much we pay each month, plus that one-time registration fee equals the total amount you pay per year. So how would I solve this to find out how much I pay per month? Well, first, I'm going to subtract 150 from both sides. 
This equals zero, leaving me with 12m equals 480. Look familiar? We subtracted 150 and got 480. And then the opposite of multiplication is division. So we divide both sides by 12 and we find that m is equal to 40. This is exactly what we came up with over here, only it was set up in a two-step equation. It's going to be really important for you to see how stories relate to equations, and I really think it's going to help the equations make more sense. So there you go.